Welcome guys, in this video we're going to see unit testing. So what exactly unit testing is and how it works. So let's see is the definition of it. By definition, unit testing is a software testing method by which individual units of source code, sets of one or more computer program modules together are tested to determine whether they are fit for use. So basically we check the small portion of code if that particular code is doing what it's supposed to do. So we check that and that is the way how we put the unit testing on the application. Now we are going to see test driven development in this uh, video and this test driven development basically tells us that how uh, you create uh, a test and how you uh, create the application according to that test so that you get the idea how things should work and uh, um, it is easy to debug in case when you want to debug it. Now you will be able to implement unit testing once you complete this video uh, and understand all the concepts so you will be able to implement it in your own application. So let's get started and see how we can uh, make unit testing work. And to start with, I'm going to create a brand new folder on the desktop and I'm going to give it a name of uh, unit test. I'm going to open the terminal now in here. I'm going to make it a little bigger here. So I say ls list item. Here I have desktop, so I can go there. So I simply say here desktop and slash. On desktop, I have this unit test, so unit and then test, simply. And you can see that I'm there now. So if I say ls here, you can see there's no items here. So I simply say here clear. Now I'm going to install a package. And for installing that package, we need to make sure we have Composer installed on our system. So if I say here Composer and hit return, I see these commands. And if you don't see these commands while running Composer, that means Composer is not installed in your system. So you need to install Composer. And for that, the links are in the description for Windows as well as for Mac OS. Now, as I have the Composer installed, I can install the PHP unit package. That package is going to uh, help us work for the testing. So I'm going to clear this screen now. and. So the package we need to use is PHP unit. You simply can put here PHP unit and in the Google and the first thing you will see the PHP unit. It's a very good and uh, uh, advanced package for testing new, uh, PHP. So I, I click there and again here in the documentation English. Now we have here installing PHP unit. So we can simply go here. Now we're going to use the uh, composer, which is given here. This command we need to run. You can also uh, use the curl if you want to. You can check this uh, link. This link is in the description. So if you want to try that, if you're trying to install using composer, that's a lot easier. So we are going to do that way. So we are already in the folder. So I'm just going to copy paste the command and the version is 9.5 that we are going to use in this uh, uh, course. So I'm going to hit return now and then it's going to install for us. It's installing the files. Open the folder. In the desktop I have this PHP unit so I'm just going to open there. And here we have the project. So currently it is installing. It, it completed in the install. If I go inside the folder I get this uh, vendor folder that is installed by Composer. There is Composer.json, there is Composer.log. So these three uh, things we have here, the same in the uh, RBS code. So we need to uh, write tests here. So first of all, in the main unit test directory, I want to create a directory and that directory is going to be the tests directory so let's do that so I can click here and I say tests now there can be uh, tests for feature tests for units so we are going to cover unit so I'm going to create a folder inside here so here it's going to be tests unit and inside this unit we are going to write our tests now if you uh, work or have worked with Laravel, you might 
uh, notice that there they have by default tests with the uh, directory and their units and the feature uh, to for the directories but here we are going to work with the unit testing so we are just creating unit here i'm also going to create another directory in the unit uh, test directory which is going to be app so we are going to create the model you know, or any other php files in here so this is going to be the main file uh, model directory and here in the composer.json i'm going to add the auto load so that it auto loads the files the classes automatically so i'm simply going to say here auto load and here we are going to pass three values and it is going to be psr4 and it's an object and here we are going to give the directory to app as we have app directory and we pass app all right so this is the directory we created here so we can save this and this is going to deal with the auto load now for uh, working with this we need to run a command that's going to be composer dump auto load dash o and i made a mistake here and you can see that it's, it's generating optimized uh, auto load files so here i'm generating optimized auto load files so yeah, this has 1,000 plus classes that is all happening because of the vendor folder there. They have a few packages and those packages have classes. So it is optimizing and generating those for us. So here I simply gonna say clear the screen. Now as we have PHP unit installed, we can run a PHP unit command. And that command is uh, simply we say dot slash and then we are going to say vendor and after that we want to say bin and then php unit and when you run this command you're going to get all the options all the uh, configuration options from the php uh, test unit test so here you can check uh, all the options and details about those and uh, you need to define a few of these options to work with um, the test so we are, for example we need to define the where we have the uh, dash v verbos so output as much as information possible for that we need this or we can say dash dash bootstrap a php script that is included before the tests run so uh, we also have prepend a php script that is included as early as possible there are so many options. We have options for debug, we have option for repeat, so runs the test repeatedly. Uh, so this is something that we need to provide as a configuration. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a file and you're going to use few of these options uh, to tell our application. So whenever we run the command, it takes these parameters, the parameters we provide in that uh, file and pick from there before running any tests so for that what we need to do we need to go here in the directory and here in the main unit test directory i'm going to create another uh, file and this is going to be php unit dot xml so this is going to be the file and here we need to say first of all first thing first we need to paste here the xml version information and after that we i'm going to create a tag it is going to be php unit and then we need to close this tag as well now inside this tag we need to tell that what we want to do what exactly uh, going to be the directory where we want to run the tests so uh, we created the directory tests here so we want to mention our directory there so here what i say i say here tests suits all right so this is going to be another tag just like this now inside this test suit I'm going to pass single suit so it's going to be test um, suit now here we can give it a name so I'm going to give it a name of uh, let's call it PHP you can give any name so I'm saying here PHP test suit simply and here inside this we want to run uh, tell the directory for the test 
So here I say the another tag, it's gonna be directory. And then I'm gonna close this directory just like that. Now here inside it, we just uh, mentioned the name of the directory. So it's tests in our case, so I say tests. Now, uh, this is uh, almost done, but a few more things we can add here. So let's add that. So in PHP unit, we need to pass these configuration uh, settings as well. So we currently just saying tests, but we haven't passed any configuration settings. So the main settings um, for this um, video of ours we need is first is bootstrap. So if you remember the bootstrap we saw here, uh, PHP script that is included before and runs the test. And what I want to do, I want to load all the uh, classes. So here, vendor slash autoload.php. And this is inside a vendor, which is yeah, autoloading. So if I go here, and you can see that that file is there. So we are just calling that file nothing more. If you want to run any other file, you can use the configuration from here. And you can adjust this file. Now we already added this. Now what I want to do, I want to add a few more parameters. So you just pass me your parameters here. So I say the output we want to see, it should be colorful. So it's going to be easy to read. So I'm going to call here colors true. And then we want verbals. And I want it to be true as well. Now the another thing is stop. So stop on failure. So let's say we are going to write a few tests and each uh, PHP is going to run each test one by one. So if any test fails, we want to stop the script there. And it should inform us that that particular test failed. So for that, we need to say here false or true. So I'm going to say true. Just stop on failure, true. All right, so this is all of what we need to uh, make our PHP uh, unit command work. So if I run here, uh, clear. Now we created this file and it is going to pick every setting from here. If you don't provide this file, uh, in that case, you will have to uh, provide all the uh, these commands after your uh, main command. So here, like I just ran this command here, uh, dot dash vendor bin PHP unit. So if you want to run, uh, let's say version or something, something like that, you will be putting after at the end here, so, or here, let's say here, like this. So we don't want to do this way, that's why we created this file. And then if you notice here, we have colors true. So we are getting here a yeah, mustard color and we are getting the information about our test on running. We are using 9.5 version. So that is uh, showing up and by running all this command. So this is the command that we'll be running to make uh, to tests. Now currently when I ran this command, it says no tests tests executed the thing is we gave it the directory tests and if we go in tests we have only a folder and no test inside it so to have some tests we need to uh, create tests here and those tests are going to be the PHP classes so here in unit folder I'm going to create a sample test so I'm gonna call it sample and it is as a sample test should have the test at the end sample test so I'm going to create this class now here we are going to say PHP and we want to say here class and sample test same as the name of the file and I forgot to add the PHP here it should be dot PHP and here sample test now the sample test it's going to be a class, but it is going to extend PHP unit. So here we are going to call a class. So we're going to say here use, and we're going to say PHP unit backslash framework and test case. All right, so this is what it is going to extend. So here's say extends 
test case. All right, great. So here we have our first sample test. So if I run this command now, it should, now as we created the sample test clause, we can run uh, the command again. So I'm going to run this vendor pin PHP unit. And this time we get no tests found in class sample test. Now the thing is, if you notice previously we had no tests executed, this time it recognized that we have a sample test class. But this time it is looking for tests. So it says no tests found in class. So we it, we don't have anything here currently. That's we are getting the error. So we need to add our test now. So uh, here we have the assertion zero. In a moment we are going to see what assertions are and how works. So first we need to define a test here. Now let's write our first test. So I'm going to uh, write here a function. It's going to be public. function I'm going to say this uh, now whenever you write test you uh, start with test so you say test and then you whatever you want to do so here I say true returns true all right simple so just true returns true and this is going to be our test. Now, when we run the command, it's going to look for, okay, there is a test written in the function name initially. So this is a test. So let's see if I go here and I run this command again, this time it said this test did not perform any assertion. So we have tests uh, which with the status of risk one, and it doesn't have any assertion. Assertion is still zero. So what exactly is this uh, assertion? So the thing is, when you write a function, you have a function for testing something, you check that what exactly um, a function should return. So let's say you were writing this test to check some particular function or feature, and you were expecting some outcome from there. So if you want to compare that, uh, you will be using assertions. So let's see the example first. So Assertion is something like this. So I say here, dollar this, and then I say assert, and then I simply say true. Now this is going to check if whatever value we pass inside this function is true or not. So if I pass here true, and I'm going to save this, and then I run this command again. So I'm gonna clear the screen first and then I run command again. You see here one test and one assertion and this green color means our test passed. So it says okay, so there is no issue. So this test was expecting a true in return. So we got the true, we got a successful test. Now, let's say uh, for example, you might have some functionality here so let's say if one equals one which is true uh, uh, then you say here let's say here i create a variable dollar output just to show you the uh, example here and like how it might work in your code so this is a dollar output and it is false by default but if one is equal to one you are setting it to true and then you're passing this to here so I pass here go back there run this test again we get uh, test passed now if I say one is is equal to two which is not true so this is not going to be true and it is going to pass their failed uh, false so here I run this it says here failed asserting that false is true so this assert true is expecting if our function so let's say you have an application where you are inserting this test you will call its code here and you will use this assertion if you are expecting true from that code so this code i'm expecting true then i'm using assert true now we have so many options when it comes to assert so if we go to php unit documentation here uh, you will see the assertions 
So we have here uh, so, so many types of assertions. You can see here, assert count, um, where we are checking the count, we're dealing with that. We're going to see a few of these. We have assert array has key. So if array has particular key, so you might return some data where you will checking some key. So for now, just, just get this idea that you will be using a few of these assertions and this assert true, expect true if from the above functionality. And if it is uh, true, then this test is going to be passed. So that's how this works. So let's see another example, just to clear the basics here. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to create another test. So here I'm going to say public function. And this is going to be check if has key. So I'm just uh, writing a function. This function returns nothing, so I pass uh, return void. And here inside I say dollar this, and I'm going to call the uh, assertion this time. So I go to the website as I showed you before. I'm just going to copy this uh, assert has key, the same one we need to use here. And here I'm going to pass that. Okay, we need to check. So passing here, uh, let's check if the array has an age key and then I want to pass here an array. So here I create an array. So here dollar array. Uh, Roger maybe. And then the H. All right. So we check here H 23. Okay. Now we are, we have an array. Now we can pass this user array here, dollar user array and say this. Now it is going to check semicolon so it is going to check if it has the key and if it has key this test should pass so let's go let's go to the terminal here I'm gonna clear the screen again and I'm going to run this test okay we got uh, and that is happening because of the first test so if you uh, check here we have failure test one and uh, so it basically test one assertion one failure one so it ran the test and if you remember in the configuration we said stop on failure true so it failed here it didn't go to the next test it just stopped here so let's correct that what we need to do we need to make this test pass so we can go to the next test so i simply turn this to one so one equals to one it becomes true and this test is going to be passed now so we'll go here run the test again and this time it runs now it's in one test and I made a mistake I made a uh, this check if has key but we forgot I had to forgot to add test here so we need to pass here test check and this is something you need to be careful about too I save this and here this time it should work so let's see let's go back run again we have test two and two assertions now if I go back change this to two just to see if it stops on the first test so we go here it stops again failure test one assertion one failure one so it stops it doesn't go to the second test it just stops there so to work we need to have the uh, above test true to go on the next test so that's how we configured it so you get the idea here so we have the key present in our array and it is checking assert array has key and uh, if it is having the key so it is uh, returning uh, the test true and uh, successful so if I change here age one two or something, something else and now if I try this so we get failure test two assertion true failure one so one test failed one passed and this one is the one failed so we have if you go and see the details details are given right here that uh, failure assertion that an array has the key of h12 so you get the idea that where exactly is the mistake so here and one more thing to add here yeah we pass tests so this becomes a test so we you know, php unit sees it as a test but what if you don't want to pass test there is an option so if i say here check if has key 
and still I want it to be test. So in that case, I will have to put here a comment like this, and then I say add test. So if you pass this, and this again will be considered as test. So if I go back here, I clear the screen and run the test. You see two tests, uh, two assertions. Now if I go back here and I remove this comment, and then I try again, you can see that one test, one assertion. So yeah, this is something, another thing that you can use if you want to. And if you want your test to be written like this, or you don't want to add the test here, keyword in the function name, so you can uh, use this way. Okay, so we saw the sample test. Now let's work with some functionality. Now we want to do test-driven development. So in this test-driven development, we are going to first going to create a test file, and then we are going to create the model file to see how it works. So let's get started in unit uh, folder here, where we have sample tests. I'm going to create another for a file. I'm going to uh, going to call it employee. So it's going to be employee test .php. So this is going to be the uh, another test file and for your tests you will and might create more further uh, classes just the same way as I have the sample test here we can copy the code from here so I simply copy everything and paste in here now we need to change first of all the class name it's going to be employee all right now the functions we are going to define ourselves so I'm going to remove those functions here so we have another test class ready. So I'm going to close the sample test. I'm going to close this XML and composer. And here, now first, I'm going to create a function and that function is going to do, it's going to get the uh, employee details. So let's say we want a function to get the employee name. So here I say public function and I'm going to call it test get employee and then name. So we are getting the employee name. Uh, if the function is uh, not returning anything, we can pass void. Now, if you don't want to pass void, that's up to you. I'm going to create a dollar employee and it is going to be from employee class. We don't have that class, so we're going to create it. So I'm simply going to say here, new and it's going to be app models employee okay this is going to be the class currently we don't have it we just have app folder so we will be creating it and here once you have it you can say dollar uh, employee and then you say set name and we pass a name so I'm passing Roger here so here we are saying that in this class we have a function set name and we are setting name using that function as simple as that and at last we are going to check for dollar this and this time we are going to use another assertion so assert and it's not true it is equals so equals so it is going to check if the both values are equals so we need to get dollar employee and as we are setting a name in a function inside this class, we can get the name as well. So we say here, get name, it's another function, and we want to check whatever this function returns, is it equal to uh, Roger? So if these two values are equal, this test will pass. So that's how this test will work. So, all right, so if I uh, go now and run the command here and we get an error we get class employees not found so we need to create that class so I go here and here we need to create a directory first of all it's going to be models and inside there I need to create a class with the name of employee dot PHP simple class Right, save this class go back and I clear the screen run the test again 
and this time we have okay still not I need to provide the namespace uh, sorry about that so namespace it is going to be uh, app okay it should be fine now so let's um, so we get uh, this time a uh, different error. So here we were getting the class not found. This time it says call to undefined function set name. Why set name? Because in the test, when this test ran, it first checked the class, second it checked the set name, and at last it will check the get name. So here it gave the error because it didn't see this function in this class. So let's create this function. So here I say function to set employee name so I say here public function set name and here we are gonna get a name and what I want to do I want to set it to a variable so we can use it anywhere so I say here I create a product in value and it's going to be employee all right and here as we are setting we can call this variable inside this class so I say dollar this employee and this is equal to dollar name so whatever value is coming in name put inside this dollar uh, employee so we, once it is inside here we can call it in any function so we can save this now if I run this now we are again going to get together as we do not have get name so you can see that we get the error for get name. So let's create a get name method there. So I simply create here function to get employee name. And it's going to be public function get name. Now here we don't need to pass anything because we are just going to return the value. So here we can say return. And we can, as we are setting the name here, we can return this. So we say dollar this, and we say employee. All right. So this is the name we are returning. Now, uh, so here, if you see, first we call the set name. It it's added the name. It uh, added the name here in the variable, and then we're running the get name here. So it's going to get the uh, name automatically. So this time, as we are uh, doing both the steps it should give us a successful test so let's see so we go here run the test we get test 3 uh, assertions 3 so it ran the test on both files in sample and employee test and it gave us the results and our test successfully passed in this time now let's see another example now we won't we are already working with the name let's do something more with this employee so first we get the age and then for further data so what we need to do simply uh, uh, create a public function and test get employee age all right function returns nothing and we pass void here and here we are gonna use this uh, dollar employee again because we want to uh, set the age this time so dollar employee and then I say age oh sorry we're gonna say set age and here we're gonna pass the number so I'm gonna pass here the number then here we say dollar this and here we can say assert equals and in assert equals we can say dollar employee get age so we are setting age and we are getting it so I say 23 here all right so if I run this it should give us error because we don't have these functions we have this class that error will not come anymore so I run the here and you can see call to undefined function set age so let's create this function so I go back there and here I say function to public function set h and just like we did in the name we are going to set an h here so I said all of these and employee h going to be
be equal to dollar h so we don't have dollar h right now so let's put it there so i'm going to put it here we don't have this variable either so let's save this too so we go here protected you can give it as well public as well if you want to but uh, here uh, i'm giving it protected so that we use uh, using getter get method and set method so here we are setting the age now let's get the age so here I say public function and this is going to be get age we don't need to pass anything in here and I did not add the comment which is very good practice if you add a comment so function to get employee age set here so scrape that now in get age we just want to return this so simply do that so we say here return and save this so if I go to test we are doing the same thing we are passing 23 then we are checking if it is 23 so let's see if everything works fine so here let's first clear the screen and then run the test so we get four tests four assertions and we have okay sign so that our tests are uh, clear and working fine. Now we have the test to get the name and age of employee. We can also have a get uh, test to get both of values. So for that, so simply say here, uh, public function. And in a moment, it is going to make sense why I'm doing uh, more tests and why and how this is going to affect so let's add this so as a test and this time we going to uh, get employee name and h all right function will be void again and we just want to test it so it's not going to return anything so we can uh, work with that so here i simply gonna say copy and paste employee again just like that and here dollar employee and this time we are going to call a function set name and h and here I'm going to pass two values first Roger second 23 and here we are gonna say assert equals again and here it's gonna be dollar employee get name and age all right and here we want to compare to uh, to an array and it is going to be uh, Roger and the age going to be 23 all right so here we're getting these values and comparing with this array of these two values and here we are getting the value so currently, obviously, it is going to give us the error because we don't have the set uh, name as well as we don't have the get name. So let's add that. So we go here. So here I'm simply going to add a function. Function to set name and age of employee. All right like function and we say here set name and age all right so we are getting two values here so simply say uh, dollar name dollar each and here we are gonna say dollar this name dollar name dollar this employee h dollar h all right so we're counting the both properties here and here i have employee and i called here employee name so it's it's to be corrected it's going to be employee and employee h okay so both are going to be set and let's get 
if I run, obviously we're gonna get the error for get name and age, so let's add that one. So for that I say here, function to get name and age of employee public function get name and age. All right, so here we don't need to pass any values. I simply gonna say and other this. Now, uh, here we are, if you remember in the test, we are comparing it with an array. So we need to uh, make sure that whatever this returns, it should be an array of, with these two values to make it uh, a, a pass test. So here, when I go, um, what I can say, I can simply say here, return an array, and they're going to be first value dollar days, and it's going to be employee, and the second value dollar days, and employee name. All right, so we're getting the both values. Now let's see what happens in the tests. So I go here, clear the screen, and run the test. And we get, I think I made a mistake. So here, uh, I made an employee in name, which is not there. So we're gonna say employee age. So we go back there and, and run the test again. And you can see that we get the five tests, five assertions. So we are getting uh, what we're looking for. So here we are successfully uh, doing it. We are running in the um, assertion, each single assertion on each function, but we can run more than one assertions. So let's see what I'm talking about here. So if I go to the sample test that we checked before, here we have array has key. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to use the same here in this function. So I'm gonna pass here. Uh, so first we need to check to assert equal. So if the values are equal, after that, what I'm going to check, I'm going to check that out. So we, now here uh, we are returning uh, two values. So we can uh, check if there is value. So if I say here one, so this array has uh, two values, zero index and one index, and that means key zero. So it's going to be like this, it's doing that way. So that is what is returning. It's not showing zero one there because it is indexed or uh, it's not uh, it's simply passing the values, not the keys. So here uh, we're gonna check if we have the key one inside this get name. So we're just gonna copy this, pause here, save this, go back. I'm gonna clear the screen first and I'm gonna run the test. Now you see here that we have five tests and six assertions and we got successful uh, on this one. So if I say here, uh, check if the key three is present. We know that we have only two values coming in this array, so we don't have three, so it's gonna fail. So if I go here, it fails. So it says fail to asserting that array has the key three because that array has three, one, zero, and one. So you get the idea we have multiple assertions we can pass in a test. I wanna show you one more thing. Now, when we go here in our employee test uh, class, we have the function test and get the employee name, then age, then name and age. So if you notice, we are calling the employee model each time. And here it is also used, here it is also used. So what we can do, we can uh, take this model out and call it whenever we uh, want it because there is a method that is available in PGP unit that runs before every test. So let me show you how it works. So basically we are going to define a method and it's going to be public function and it is called setup. So this setup method is going to run each time and it returns nothing so it's void and it return um, basically going to run. So this test runs, this function is going to call before this test runs, then uh, before this test. So if you have 10 tests, it's going to run each time. So we are instantiating our class every time. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna put uh, this here 
and I want to create the employee uh, whenever uh, we set up so what I do simply I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here all right nothing changed but the thing is now if I take this employee outside, we can access it in each function. So if I say here that protected dollar employee, and here it is protected, and here now I call it this dot employee. So you get the point. Uh, this time we are, I forgot the semicolon here. So now this time we can use it in every function so all we need to change instead of dollar employee we need to call this employee so let's copy this I'm gonna remove this from here and I'm going to paste it here all right so this employee and then set name so now each time it is going to re uh, run on each test so it is going to be renewed every time so it's not going to be uh, something that your employee data change here and then change data uh, pass to the next function it is not going to do that because it's uh, we are setting it each time um, so it is going to be renewed uh, instance of employee class so here we got this employee and we need to pass the same way in other functions Right, so we have this employee on uh, every function now and we are instantiating our class here so let's do this let's run the test and if everything is right we should get all the tests passed uh, so here we have five tests six assertions so everything is working just as expected now let's see the example of a collection how you work with collection if you're not aware of collection if you heard Laravel in Laravel we have collections and uh, we can store data in collection using the Laravel now in our case we are not using Laravel we are using PHP so I'm going to create a collection class and then we are going to put the data in there and that that data array going to become an object of collection so let's see how it works first of all we want to create another class in our unit test because we want to have another test and that's going to deal with only the collections so here I say here uh, another class collection test dot PHP all right so this is the class it's going to be now I'm gonna copy the code from sample test I'm gonna paste here change the name to collection sure name spellings are correct collection test and we are going to remove the methods here and we're going to add our own now the same way I'm going to create another model so here uh, in the directory in this uh, app folder for us so let's do that I say here support and then I'm going to call a file inside it which is going to be collection just to arrange it this way and here I'm going to create a class so it's going to be collection .php, PHP namespace and it's going to be app and then support all right then it's class all right I changed the name of this folder to capitalize so it should be bigger so support collection so let's see how we can get uh, and work with more assertion methods using collections here. The collection class and here I'm going to write the first uh, test for it in collection test. So that's right here. So it's going to be public function. And I say, uh, uh, let's do this. And this one, we are not going to use the test. We are going to use the comment so that we can see how we can use that as well so here we say check and we want to check if data present and this array is going to check now we want it to run as test so we want to add the comment add test 
in here what we want to do I want to call the collection class so it's going to be dollar collect you can see here what I want to do I want to say dollar collect and I want to call the function which is going to uh, be get data and paste here a certain empty so it's just going to check for this particular uh, if we have this method and if it is returning empty or not so it is going to work on array so let's go there in collection so we need to uh, create this method get data otherwise we're going to get error so currently if i run this we get uh, the error so we don't have get data so let's add here so here public so here what we want to do we want to uh, get dollar this and here we can uh, and get the items and we want to uh, have the items it's not our item now currently we uh, don't have the data setting anywhere so what we can do here is uh, either we can have by default or we can create a set data the way we did before so previously we used get data and set data so in this case um, I want to try something different so what I do I'm just going to pass here an array and that is going to be the data so I'm going to say here 14 23 56 so these are the values in this collection we are passing and here in collection as we have and currently no data we can call the uh, constructor so if you know the concept here when you instantiate a class a constructor runs automatically so we can create that constructor here and that constructor is going to assign the values for us so here first I'm going to assign this in dollar items so here I say protected dollar items and that's going to be the variable now here we want to run a constructor so it's here going to be public function underscore underscore construct all right so we have a constructor here and this constructor is getting an item and this is the item that we want to set like this so we're gonna just gonna paste here instead of there so if you see here we go to collect here we are passing an array this array will be passed here and it is going to be assigned to item items here and it will be accessible so in get data function what we can do we can have a local variable so I say dollar data it is going to be an empty array then I can say here for each and we can access to these items now so simply copy this from here paste here and then I say has dollar item and then we can put this inside data just like that dollar item all right and here we return dollar data so you can see that the get data will return uh, value an array of array of uh, these numbers so it should uh, it is not empty in that case so it should, it should fail this test so let's see let's go here I clear the screen run the test so it says fail asserting that the array is empty because the array is not empty we have three values we are passing so what I do I remove these three values this time and save it go back now you can see that test passed because we are checking here if empty so we are passing empty and that makes this test to pass so this is that is uh, the working with the empty and you know, assert empty now here we uh, get the data like for example here we pass the array and if you see dollar collect here so let's me reward it back and if I copy this and var dump here you can see this time when I run we get an object where we have yeah, array inside it with the three values so that's the reason when we uh, our daily here we were looping through that object and uh, you know, making it an array because here a certain empty checks for 
for an array if that array has value or not. So here we are passing an array with the values. So okay, if you have noticed uh, in this sample test.php, the class name is not correct. It can create an error, so we need to correct it. So it's simple test. Also in employee test, if I go to the class name, it should match always. So it should have a capital T to make sure you have it. Other than this, I think rest all is good, but yeah, it should match. If you like the content of this channel and you want me to create more videos like this, please support me on Patreon. You can also subscribe to this channel, like this video and share with others. Thank you for watching.